Good to see everybody. Mary Jo and I are so excited to be here with you guys today. Um, just always good to be back at your home church, to God be the glory. We have something very special going on. Give God a little bit of glory for that. He is so deserving. And so good to be here. You know, I don't know what uh, Pastor Adam was thinking when he named this series, Bring the Heat. Um, I suspect that he was talking about the fact that he's going to have a bunch of gifted speakers over the course of the summer that are going to come in and bring their very best message. I mean, and, and you got a lot to look forward to in the days ahead. Um, I think that prayer might have backfired because, man, has it gotten hot outside over the past <laughs> couple of weeks as well, you know. Um, <laughs> it's truth, right? Uh, next week, even my son-in-law is going to be preaching his very first message. Tyler's going to be getting up here. Super excited for him. And uh, I won't be here to critique him because I've got to be preaching at the other church that day. But uh, Mary Jo will be here. I've seen him preparing. I've seen him studying. And I know he's got a great message. So I encourage you to be here next week and bring some friends with you. It's going to be a great message on identity. So when I read Bring the Heat... Um, it honestly weighed heavy on my heart. And as I was preparing uh, for this message, a number of things were occurring as I was attempting to uh, write this message. And uh, it's a challenging message, I think, because, um, it, because, yeah, that's why. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think it's a challenging message in light of the culture that we live in today. Um, you know, as I was thinking about this message and praying about this message, I couldn't th help but think about how many people that we love, how many people that we know that are struggling in many of the areas that I'm talking about today. You might be here and you feel like you came in ready to break down. I'm praying that God uses this for a breakthrough moment for you today. But um, it's, a, it's a challenging topic as well at the same time because there's so much emotions that are potentially tied to it in light of the culture that we live in today. But it's important that we get in there and get into this kind of a message. But uh, as I was preparing, a couple of things happened. Nationally known pastors like uh, Dr. Tony Evans, anybody of maybe my age or older, like I remember getting saved and in the 90s in Miami, he was on the radio and you know, Dr. Tony Evans, you could hear his booming, deep baritone type voice sharing the gospel with us and, and uh, so influential and he fell in ministry. And then uh, this past week, as we were writing the message again, another great pastor from Gateway Church, Dr. Robert Morris, ended up falling in ministry. And I'm like, my goodness, like who is exempt? I mean, my goodness, how crazy is this world that we live in where in some ways God's allowing judgment even, and it says that it'll come to the house of the Lord first at the same time, right? Um, we sat across the table from a couple who was struggling very deeply in their marriage. It seemed irreparable. It seemed challenging. I mean, what a, what a painful moment. We had to make phone calls to others who had lost uh, a son this week. That's a very challenging thing. So all these are kind of weighing on you while you're trying to, to, to prepare for the message. You know, on the national stage, um, I see video going across of a man with a beard dressed in a dress standing at the lectern of the White House, poking fun and making fun while we're on virtually the brink of World War III. I'm like, what in the world? The devil is a liar. What in the heck is going on? Everything around us seems broken, does it not? In some ways we're experiencing new things, in some ways we're not. We'll examine that today. I believe we live in a world that is in control of the father of lies. This is no um, shock to those of you who have been here for some time. A world right now where anything goes. In fact, the more outrageous, the more extreme you can be, the more that is celebrated, right? Social media seems to do that. The more craziness that you could do, then guess what? You're going to get more views. You're going to get more likes, and people celebrate that kind of craziness. We live in a world where you get to pick your own truth. Scientific method makes no sense anymore, apparently, right? You could pick your truth. You could decide your identity. You could choose who you are over, you know, thousands of years of, of history seemingly negated in just a moment. We live in a world where Romans chapter 1 and Matthew 24 are being played out before our very eyes. Yet guess what? At the same time, I'm here to tell you that we serve the one true and living God. His name is Jesus Christ. We serve the, the maker of heaven and earth. 
the King of kings and Lord of lords, the one who sent his only begotten son to die a sinner's death on the cross, that you and I might be set free. Hallelujah, Jesus. And at the same time, let me tell you something. He will not be mocked for long. He will not be mocked for long. So as I prepare to share some hard truths with you, I need to share two vitally interrelated scriptures to set the stage for our message. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? What is he talking about there? Our feelings deceive us. In a world where facts don't seemingly matter, he wants us to live by our feelings, which are deceitful, right? Proverbs 14, 2. There is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way of death. Right now, our world is suffering under a great delusion, and it is on a path to destruction. We live in a world where our feelings deceive us and make us ignore even the facts. You could tell people the facts, and they will deny them. I'm going to tell you some facts today. I'm going to try to avoid my own opinions. I'm going to give you facts from the Bible. Do you believe the Bible is true? All right, then we're in the right place. Remember that in just a few moments when you start getting mad at me, right? Remember, don't shoot the messenger. Hallelujah, Jesus, right? Lord, would you be with us today? Would you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and the power to put your word into practice today? Father, if there be things that we are confronted with that are in our own hearts as a result of what we hear today, would you use them to deal with us and change us and transform us and ignite us? For those of us who have loved ones who are dealing with these things, people that are close to us, Lord God, would you allow us to speak the truth in love in such a way that would draw them by your grace unto repentance? Lord, would they know how much we love them? that we're not judging them for any sake because we know, like Paul, that we are the chief of sinners, that we've got issues, that we've got challenges, that we need you each and every day to just barely get by. Lord, thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for directing us. We love you and praise you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. So today I'm going to do my best to speak the truth in love with the hope that somebody here gets saved. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray that people would be set free from bondage, from sin, from death, and a way and a path to destruction. Amen? So I want to speak about something I've actually shared on from this pulpit a few times before. I would, I would highlight it as old demons manifesting themselves in new days. Old demons that are at work in our own society today, Right? I want to start in Matthew chapter 24 to set the stage for just a moment. Jesus' disciples ask him a set of questions, and then he begins to respond. It says in Matthew 24, 3, Now he sat on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to him privately asking, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and what will be the end of the age? He starts to give us some definitions of what the end of the age is going to look like. I think Jim... Uh, Pastor Jim Reynolds preached on this and he, he did a, a very articulate word on it a few months ago about why we truly believe that we are in the end days, right? We're nearing the end if we're not there already. Come on, Lord, would you come quickly in our generation? We need you. Jesus says to them in verse 4, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. I want to focus on that word deceit for just a moment because the, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through him, right? The enemy is the chief liar, right? That's part of the definition of who he is. He is a liar by nature, and I'm not going to focus so much on the messianic complex right now, but on the deceit. There is a great deceit on the people of the world right now in many, many, many areas. And I believe that God wants to impart us with wisdom to know how to navigate these days and age and be able to reach people in the midst of it. He doesn't want us to have any truth, right? If you go on, verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things will come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Yes, there's been wars all throughout history, but one of the kinds of wars that you need to focus on is the ones that surround Israel, the rebirth of the nation of Israel. That is where it's all about. And right now, guess what? Israel is at war. Since October 6th, I think the date was, or 7th, they have been at war, right? 
And then right now that war is about to expand. They're talking about going into Lebanon right now as part of that war. And Iran has partially been engaged in it directly, but also indirectly through all of their proxies. So we live in a world where Israel is at war. Not only is Israel at war, but Ukraine is at war right now as well, right? And we're supporting that. So if you think of it from an American-centric uh, philosophy, you may or may not support the war, but your tax dollars are going to war, right? They're going to kill people all around the world. It doesn't matter. In the same way, day and age, Romans were going and doing all kinds of bad things, right? And the people still had to pay taxes, and Jesus said, pay your taxes unto Caesar, right? It's a sad state that we support things that stand in great opposition to the things that we believe deep down. Syria is at war. The Middle East is at war. There's rumors of World War III. Did you know this very week the United States implemented a new draft? An electronic draft where you no longer have to physically register for the draft, but young people will be automatically registered for the draft. And in a twist, it actually talked about women being drafted. That's part of it. That's in there. Why are they preparing for a draft? We haven't talked about a draft in like 50 or 60 years. What are they preparing for, these evil people? Come on, Jesus. Russian warships and subs were stationed in Cuba this past week. They're resurrecting the Cold War right before our eyes. Did you see any of those graphics? They were trolling the state of Florida. I mean, they literally went down the state of Florida with the subs and the stuff. Uh-oh, come on, Jesus. <laughs> I thought Florida would be exempt. We're the sunshine state. What you talking about? Nope, they actually had Russian warships and subs trolling us, right? Nation against nation, racial tensions, lack of borders globally. This is part of it. They want people from all different backgrounds to start mixing together with one another, which is wonderful. I love it in the context of who we are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Look at the diversity in this room. God is good. But you know what the powers that be on the evil side is they want to get everybody all hating one another, right? They want to do it for a different purpose and a different reason. And one day I'm here to tell you it's going to explode in a bad way because they try to foment it because the devil is a liar. Do you not see these things? He goes out there on social media and they redirect the feeds with algorithm, algorithms to mess with our mind and get us to hate people that we don't hate. We love each other, but they want to get us to hate one another. How crazy is that? The father of lies is in control. We need to understand this and see life through that lens. There will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Did we not just get through the COVID season? These kinds of things are happening. A global pandemic, right? And verse 8 is a scary one to me. It says, and all these things are but the beginning of sorrows. It's going to get worse, you're telling me? <laughs> the Bible says it's going to get worse, people, before it gets better. Because the next part of this verse has not been realized yet, but it's starting to. As the pressure cooker is starting to crank up, one day this part's going to become, come to, to pass. It says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. You'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake, and many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Right? I'll be bold enough to state that this will ultimately come through Islam. If you go all the way back to the Bible, it talks about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It talks about the illegitimate son, Ishmael, right? They've been at war. The sons of God have been at war with the sons of the devil, manifested in an earthly realm through that means for so long. Who else goes around and cuts people's heads off? But yet, if you say anything against Muslim faith in our society today, guess what? You are going to get in trouble real quick. How crazy things get. I watched this one thing. So the feminist movement, I love women. Come on, Jesus. How many of you guys love women? Hallelujah, right? <laughs> Think about the feminist craziness right now. So they are actually lauding and applauding the Muslim aspect of going and doing the full burqa thing because, you know, guys look at women and then we look at them and then we're misogynist because we look at a woman who looks good. So they're somehow twisting it all the way around where going and doing a burqa is good. No, in those societies, women have no rights, no standing. In some of those societies, they can't even drive, right? How crazy is this that people are lauding these things that are absolutely the opposite of the Bible, absolutely the opposite of freedom, but dare you speak any of this, and guess what? You're going to get canceled. Right now, it's cancel culture. One day, it's going to be kill culture from what we just read. 
Who would do that? You witness it. If you speak against those things, you get killed. It's going to be an Islamic revolution that's going to cause this one day. That's why the borders are open. That's why they're flooding Europe. You know, if you look back at the, the Ottoman Empire, you know, the British fought off the Ottoman Empire and got the Muslims out of all of Europe. And now without a firing a shot, they're letting everybody back in. You go to Ireland, you go to anywhere, and it's overrun with Muslims now. I'm not saying Muslims in and of themselves are all bad people, but no, I'm telling you that's where that war is going to come from. It's a war that's as old as time, right? It's Ishmael against Isaac and their family and their descendants. It goes back all the way to then. And because of this, also in verse 12, and because lawlessness will also abound, the love of many will grow cold. Man, people will shoot you over a dollar. They'll stomp you out for a dollar nowadays. They'll do crazy stuff like, okay, you could go out there and uh, cherry pick particular crimes and get in absolutely no trouble for it, right? You can go out there and do lawlessness and you don't get in any trouble for it. Also from a political, I'm not right or left. I'm not an elephant and I'm not a donkey. So don't accuse me of being political here. I serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords from a different kingdom. I'll call out all sides. But when you get to a weird place where if you allow it to go out there, where you can go on government campuses and be pro-Palestine and take over all of the campuses and go do stuff. But if you're on January 6th and do a peaceful takeover, a uh, supposed takeover, where they're gracefully with video walking you through with the security guards and you get 20 years in prison, there's something jacked up about the systems that we're facing right now. Regardless of right or left, right? That wasn't peaceful? I didn't see no guns. Supposedly all the Republicans have all the guns. They weren't wielding no guns that day. Come on, Jesus. You know, like, again, I'm not being right or left in what I'm saying. I'm saying it's jacked up. If you have one group of people getting 20 years in prison for going and doing something, and you have another group of people basically doing the same thing, and then they're not getting in any trouble, that's jacked up. Come on, Jesus, right? Regardless of right or left. I don't care about either of the sides on those. That needs to stop on both sides if that's what's going on. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. I told you some of y'all are going to get mad at me. Come on, Jesus. Matthew 24, 13, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And here's what we need to do. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Our job is to preach the gospel. Our job is to share the good news. Our job is to love on people and care for them and draw them in and be there for them and call out sin where there's sin and let them know we're calling them out because we love them and won't, don't want to see them die and go to eternity in hell. That's the reality of what's going on. So what's happened and what's the real nature of what we're facing, right? The real nature of what we're facing is that we're in a multifaceted war manifested through culture and politics, but at its root is spiritual in nature. There's a spiritual war that's going on in heavenly places that is manifested here on earth. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities in heavenly places. The sons of the devil are at war with the sons of God. Men die in the natural, but demons do not die. They transgress through generations. And that's where we need to face our battles, right? And what God has seemingly done is there's times where there's peak demonic activity, and then God comes in and usually quenches it. Then there's other times of peak demonic activity, and God comes in and quenches it until one day he's going to quench it once and for all time and throw all those demons into the lake of fire, right? Amen. What do I mean by that? Let's go back. Yeah, you can applaud that. God is good. He takes care of business. Think back to Noah, what was going on? The demons had so infiltrated humanity called the Nephilim, if you wanna go research it, that the Nephilim were in control of all of humanity and God had to wipe out the entire world with a flood to cure them of that and then you had many seasons of peace, right? Go up to the days of Elijah, right? You have Abraham, not Abraham, you have Ahab and you have Jezebel that rise up and they're bringing everyone into deceit and God has to raise up a man named Elijah to come in defense of them and declare that God is the true King of Kings and Lord of Lords and wipe out all those people, right? And then it comes to the time where Jesus is there and Romans are acting a fool just like we're acting a fool today. And Jesus comes on to the scene and speaks light and love and truth and switches the whole world around in that particular moment. Amen. So I believe in our generation, God is trying to raise up Elijah's. He's trying to raise up Stephen's who are willing to die for the cause. He's trying to raise up John the Baptist's in our generation. That is what we need to get through until he comes back, right? We've got to preach the word of God until he returns in Jesus' name. 
let's use the example of Jezebel, Ahab, and Elijah for a moment and then relate it back to our day. So these demons were being released in their day and they're now being released in our day in great hordes for the final battle that is to come. The devil's trying to take everyone he can with them. So in their day, the trouble starts with a man named Ahab and his wife Jezebel. 1 Kings 6, 29. In the 38th year, King Asa of the king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, became king over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, raised over Israel and Samaria for 22 years. Now Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the Lord's sight more than all who were before him. And now we're doing even more evil than he did in his generation, right? He was so jacked up that he was worse than all of them that came before him. And it came to pass as though they had been an, a trivial thing for him to walk in the sin of Jeroboam and the sons of Nabat. And he took his wife Jezebel with him, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Do we worship and serve Baal today? I'll let you know in just a moment. Then he set up an altar to Baal in the temple of Baal, which had been built in Samaria. And Ahab made a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. He was a bad, bad dude. And he had a bad, bad wife who was infected and infested with demons. They in and of themselves were not bad people per se, but the demons had control over them. The demons were working through them and doing awful things in their generation, so much so that the Bible defines them as the worst one, worse than all the other kings that came before him combined. May that not be what's written on our epitaph. Come on, Jesus, right? Let that not be what is written on us. So who is this Baal? Baal was a god of sexual promiscuity as well as human sacrifice. Could he be at work in our generation as well? He was the god of death and destruction. So Jezebel was a worshiper of Baal. So evil was Jezebel under the influence of these demons that she's actually referred to and the demons in her are referred to in the book of Revelation. Before Jesus returns, the spirit of Jezebel will be released back on the nations as it is already being done. Jezebel's spirit not only attacks women, but it also attacks men. We typically associate it with women, but this spirit can get in both men and women, and you're going to see it played out in our own generation through some of the examples that we'll give in just a moment. The God of death and destruction. So what are some of the things that this particular spirit attempted to do then and maybe is doing now? It used spiritual influence to manipulate and control others, especially to emasculate men. Do you see any of that maybe going on in our generation? Men, y'all aren't allowed to be men no more. If you're a regular dude, guess what? You're in trouble. You're not supposed to be that. Ahab would become a passive man who lived his life in fear. She would castrate the men around her who served with her. If they were to serve on her flock, so to speak, she would have them be castrated, emasculated, no longer men. They would be transgender. That spirit would do that in that generation. Are we seeing it manifested in ours as well? They would become eunuchs. At the same time, she was incredibly sexually immoral. She was sexually promiscuous. She would use sex as a tool to manipulate not only Ahab, but bring all kinds of men into her bedroom and promote it in the altars of Baal and in the temples they would have orgies and things of that nature. This is how that spirit worked. Idolatrous, she would lead others away from the authentic faith in Christ. She would incite fear and discouragement in, another, in others. Remember Elijah, even momentarily, after defeating all of the, the Baal worshipers, would run in fear for a short period of time. That's how powerful that spirit was. She also promoted false teaching. She hired an army of false teachers who spread their demonic ideology. So if we start to think towards today um, and we break it down, let's just look at America from the 60s. What started happening in the 60s? Does anybody remember? There was like the free love movement, the acid trips, the let's go party and smoke weed. Some of y'all participated in that. Oh boy, come on Jesus. Some of you are old enough in here. <laughs> to counter that, come on, Carrie Young, come on Jesus. You came right after that. Yeah? 
I'll call her out. But she became part of the Jesus movement, hallelujah, that countered it. I love it, right? God raised up the Jesus movement to counter that cultural significance. But in the midst of that, think about it. The people who came out of that that did not get saved are the professors today. What are the professors doing? They're promoting demonic ideology into the lives of the students. They're raising up the next generations of teachers. Those teachers are going out. Not every teacher, thank you, Jesus. There's a lot of good Bible-believing, God-fearing teachers. But the majority of teachers today were raised up under this demonic ideology and are placed into our schools. Thus, guess what also happened? They removed prayer from schools. So you remove prayer from schools, it creates a vacuum. The devil comes in to fill that vacuum. So he fills it with demonic ideology that is manifesting in great ways today. What did you have also happen in the early 70s was the freedom to have abortions again. The death of innocence. What was the primary sacrifice unto Baal? Child sacrifice. We don't call it that today. But man, they had to, to use another analogy like David. It says, you know, Saul had his thousands and David had his ten thousands. Ahab had his thousands. America's had its millions. And we wonder why things are jacked up. You go after the innocent before it's even born. Another demon called Ishtar was present usually with Jezebel. And Ishtar was said to be the false god of fertility. The false god of fertility. The devil wants to destroy before it even exits the womb. And then if he can't get it then, he wants to go after our children with demonically inspired ideologies. I used to think homeschoolers were weird people back in the day. <laughs> but man, I almost say if you have your kids in normal school today, you better watch out. Because they are being indoctrinated. You better be on point as a parent. Man, being there, preaching them, helping them understand because they are no doubt going to encounter demonic indoctrination in the public school system today. We need a whole army of people doing the opposite in Jesus' name. So we participated in more human sacrifices. And guess what that does? It unleashes a horde of demonic activity. And we don't see it as such, but it is. We need to see it as such. One of their favorite tactics continues to be the emasculation of men and the destruction of the family. Why? Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. They don't want men to have dominion over anything anymore. They don't want us to rule. They don't want us to reign. They say that that's an awful thing. They say that it's a terrible thing, but God said it's a good thing. It says male and female, he created them. Why do you think they attack that so hard right now? They want to attack the very image of the living God. And then you're like, Eric, well, this is really terrible because I have family and loved ones and others who are in this lifestyle and we got to do everything we can to love them. Yes, we need to do everything we can to love on them, but we also need to speak the truth in love because if not, they're going to spend an eternity in hell apart from the living God and die in their sin. We get a Father's Day and a Pride Month. That's jacked up. What was the sin that the devil was initially cast out for? Pride. We see these things in the natural and we don't question them. These are demonic manifestations in our generation, taking over the hearts and minds of our young people and warping them. We're created in the image of God. This is our identity. Male and female, we were created. Next week, I know that's gonna be part of the message is on identity. How do you find your identity in Christ? I won't go deep into that right now, but just as the spirit of Jezebel did in her generation, that same spirit continues to emasculate men in our generation. It is a multifaceted attack, a cultural attack, a biological attack, a spiritual attack. It's all out war with no rules. Even so much, even in the natural, do you know that recent statistics came out saying that men, the average testosterone in a young male today is only 400. It used to be 700 or 750. 
Part of that is demonic, but part of that is even without knowing it, the demonic infiltration into the food system and the other things that they do, the food, the medicine, all the things that they do is literally emasculating men in our generation. Literally. It's a biological attack. It's a spiritual attack. It's a cultural attack. If you dare say these things out there, boy, I'm going to get canceled in Jesus' name. And soon they're going to want to be like, oh, you're getting crucified in Jesus' name. That's how crazy the world is that we live in right now. We can't let it go unchecked. Even get to the can't reproduce part. Ishtar was the false goddess of fertility, right? Can two males procreate? Can two females procreate? I don't care if they send that video that I saw where they're pumping some dude full of hormones and he's got a beard acting like he's having a baby. Men cannot have babies. It's demonic, people. It's demonic. But the devil doesn't want us to think demonic stuff goes on in our generation anymore because if he removes that as part of the challenge, then guess what? He's removed all power from us to overcome and overtake it. He wants you to think that there's no ability for Christians to deal with demons anymore in our generation. Oh, y'all need to go get some counseling. It's going to be all right. Nothing wrong with biblical counseling in and of itself, but some things can't be counseled out. They must be cast out in the name of Jesus. It's a truth. The sooner we begin to recognize what our real enemy is, the better off we will be. Young people are so confused by these demons, they don't know if they're male or female or binary or non-binary. At the same time, they are more sexually active than ever. They are proud of their body counts. They post it online. They tell you exactly how many people they've slept with and have no problem with it. The devil wants to destroy the families. Since the 70s, we've concurrently sacrificed our children on the altars of Baal in the name of choice. How crazy is that? Lord, would you forgive us? At the same time, I'm here to tell you maybe this one should have been on Father's Day if they didn't do it. Man, it's okay to be men. It's time to act like a man. It's time to be a man. I didn't want to wear these crazy semi-skinny jeans. I don't even know what these things are. <laughs> we don't need worshipers with skinny jeans. We need men to be men. Adam's laughing. I'm in trouble later. <laughs> Told you not to wipe me up for bring the heat, man. We're in trouble. <laughs> Almost to the end today. I'm going to just read from this one. And you can tell me if it's our day and age or not. I'm going to try to add little or no commentary and let the word of God speak for itself and, and you tell me. And again, this isn't new. He was addressing the Romans at that time. And what brought down the Romans? The same exact behavior that we are participating in. If you do the research about the Roman Empire is what ultimately brought down the Roman Empire. And this time it's going to bring down the whole world and it's going to usher in the return of Jesus Christ. It says in Romans 1.18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Gets back to that truth versus deceit issue, right? If you believe these things are okay to continue on that he's talking about, you are in a deceit. Lord, help us realize the truth and get feelings out of the way. Because what may be known to God is manifest to them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools." You know, they've thrown out scientific method. They've thrown out scientific method in favor of feelings and emotions. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. 
Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lusts of their heart to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Sex outside of marriage in any context is still a dishonoring unto God. So all of you straight people who are mad at the gay people right now, if you're having sex outside of marriage, you are sinning. You need to repent. You need to go back and do what's right. Here, let's get even mad, get more people mad at me. If you are not married and you're living with one another and you're having sex, you need to repent and you need to maybe go live in another house and you need to figure it out and go back and do what's right. Oh, but we can't make our bills. Oh, God will figure it out for you. If you do it his way, he'll work it out for you. Oh, I'm not coming back. I'll be removed from the schedule. Why? They exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and they worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. And here's where it starts to get scary. For this reason, God gave them up to their vile passions. It's okay, go do whatever you want to with whomever you want to, whenever you want to, no consequences to that. For even their women exchanged the natural use of what is against nature. Likewise, the men having the natural use of the women burned in their lust for one another with men committing what is shameful and receiving for themselves the just penalty of their error, which was due. I don't care how many apostate Methodist churches or whatever other denomination wants to go in that direction says that there is nothing in the Bible that says that those things are not sin. I just read it to you. Go check what I read. Go read your Bible. Go read all the different versions of the Bible, and it'll say the same thing. Does that mean I don't have any sin? Not at all. I got issues. I need help. Thankfully, right now, there's no disqualifying sins in my life. I can say that. But guess what? If you have any sin in your life, and he highlights most of them here in just a moment, you need to deal with it. You need to let God work in your heart and your mind to change you. I just reiterate here, facts not feelings we all have feelings surrounding these issues they're very passionate and the world's going to do everything it can from cultural to stir this up and say everything eric is saying is wrong but i tried to read to you straight from the word of god romans 8 we'll read to the end of this one we're almost done and even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a debased mind I believe that is exactly what we are witnessing in our generation. People have been given, oh, you, that's what you want? You want a king? Go back to the days of Israel. You want a king? Okay, you can have a king, and guess what? You're going to get Ahab. You cried out for your earthly king? You're going to get Ahab. Oh, in our generation, we cry out for our celebrity pastors and the pastors who are never going to confront us, and everything's going to be fine and dandy and wonderful all the time, and everything's good. And then guess what? Most of those megachurch pastors, just like other pastors, ended up falling because they were not necessarily always men after God's own heart, as powerful and sad as that is. They gave him over to a debased mind to do things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliceness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to their parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous ju judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of and endorse and promote those who do. I don't care which party you are, you be letting people up in the White House doing sinful, crazy things. That is insanity. Insanity. If Trump does the same thing, should he get back in office? I'll say the same thing. That'd be craziness. Absolute nuts. Especially when you're in a world that's on the brink of World War III. If the devil wants to emasculate us and destroy us because we are one of the hopes of the world. If we as Christians here could rise up, oh my goodness, could you imagine? If we could see things as they really are and live the Bible as it was meant to be, to go out there and live for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords with all our heart, strength, soul, and mind. I'm telling you, he's looking to, when Jezebel was at her peak, he raised up Elijah and Elisha. When the Nephilim were at their peak, he raised up Noah. When Jesus was about to come on the scene, he raised up John the Baptist who was willing to get his head cut off to speak the truth to power. 
Stephen was willing to speak up against the religious in his generation and was stoned for it. It says that that's what's coming down the road for those of, a, those of us who believe. It's a scary thought to think about it in that way, right? I pray it doesn't happen in our generation, but we're seeing things accelerate very, very, very rapidly. He's looking for people who stand up. It's as if we're lone wolves crying in the wilderness against an onslaught of culture that wants to stamp out our voice, that seems to be winning, but yet I read in 1 Kings 17, 22, and Elijah said to the people, I am alone and left as a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. If I be alone and stand up against it, God will defeat 450 prophets. Who are those prophets in our generation? My final thing, like, so think about this. How many paid people does Jezebel have in the pulpit right now? How many paid people in Holly Weird does she have right now that are promoting these agendas? How many people on stages around the world and sports places around the world? How many people does she have that are paid prophets spouting the doctrine of Baal amongst the people and convincing them that these lies are to be the way in which we should live? God will defeat it in Jesus' name. Would you rise with me and bow your heads and close your eyes today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence.